Happy New Year and welcome to Auto Mundial, your weekly home for all the latest car news and reviews. Well, this week we're taking a look at everything from crossovers to limos. We have a new EV from BMW, the iX, and the exciting new Ford Puma ST. And one of the most hotly anticipated performance cars in years, the Toyota GR Yaris. Back in the 1920s and 30s, if you wanted to go racing, you didn't need a huge lorry full of spares and a roll caged supercar on slick tyres. You could simply buy a Bentley, drive it to Le Mans, race it and drive it home again. These days, of course, things are a little different, but that hasn't stopped Bentley from recreating one of its most famous cars of the period, the blower. This Bentley blower, named after the enormous supercharger, may look like Sir Henry Tim Birkin's 1929 original but it was in fact completed just a few weeks ago from scratch. Every single part of the 20s original was laser scanned and faithfully recreated, taking 40,000 man hours to assemble into this, a prototype known as Car Zero. Nope, this isn't just a one-off. Bentley, with the help of various vintage car specialists across the UK, is going to build 12 customer cars as Car Zero undergoes real-world durability testing. The test programme is designed to simulate some of the events the original cars have competed in, like the Peking to Paris rally and the Mille Miglia, to ensure the customer cars are fit for anyone looking to live out their Bentley boy fantasies. In the ever-baffling world of SUVs, we've been treated to no end of expensive performance models. A particular favourite sub-genre of the German manufacturers, we've had N, RS and AMG versions of just about every high-sided 4x4 they build. But now that need for speed is trickling down to crossovers, and this is the latest one. And the first thing you'll notice is this is not a BMW, Audi or Mercedes. This is the new Ford Puma ST, and straight from the off, things look promising. It shares most of its underpinnings with one of our favourite hot hatches, the brilliant Fiesta ST. It gets the same 197 brake horsepower, three-cylinder 1.5, not much by the standards of some fast SUVs, but it should be enough to raise a smile or two. Drive is sent to the front wheels only via a six-speed manual transmission, making this more of a high-riding hot hatch than an SUV. The chassis also borrows lots of bits from the Fiesta. The whole car has been stiffened up, while the standard Puma's brakes have been upgraded, and the steering rack is 25% quicker. There's also an optional limited slip diff working alongside a torque vectoring system to help pull the car around the corners and eliminate understeer. Of course, this being a bigger car than the Fiesta and 100 kilos heavier, it isn't quite as fast. It's not bad though, hitting 62 miles per hour from a standstill in 6.7 seconds, two tenths behind its smaller sibling. With that manageable amount of performance and the Fiesta's excellent gearbox, the Puma ST puts the emphasis on driving pleasure rather than outright straight line speed. But a performance SUV is pointless if it can't do the things a regular one can. Thankfully, the ST is every bit as practical as the regular Puma, with an enormous boot and plenty of passenger space. And of course, the Puma ST has had a sporty makeover. There's a new front splitter adding 80% more downforce, and a rear wing and diffuser at the back, which we suspect aren't quite so effective. They look cool though, giving the car a much more purposeful look. The interior has also been updated, with various bits of sporty trim and ST badges dotted around. The excellent infotainment from the regular Puma is present and correct too, completing the ST's everyday appeal. But what if you want a sporty little crossover that's more SUV than hot hatch? Well, this is the new Volkswagen T-Roc R, and it seems to take itself quite seriously. It's over £10,000 more expensive than the Ford, so what do you get for all that extra cash? Well, it certainly looks the part. The T-Roc has always been an attractive car, but the R looks even better thanks to its redesigned bumpers, rear diffuser and new LED daytime running lights. 
It sits 20 millimeters lower than the standard car and comes with some fabulous 19 inch alloys. It does a good job of looking low and sporty, but still noticeably chunkier than any Golf or Polo. Inside, there are fewer changes, however, with the standard T-Rox disappointing interior remaining largely unchanged. There are a few R badges dotted around and some nice sporty seats, but the cheap feeling scratchy plastics remain. It's all a bit dark and gloomy in the cabin, and while it can be lifted slightly by the optional colourful trim inserts, they look and feel cheap and certainly not something you want to be seeing and touching every day. What it does get though is more power, 99 more horses than the Puma to be precise. Those extra ponies are also helped along by an all-wheel drive system, meaning the little Volkswagen can hit 62 miles per hour from rest in a staggering 4.8 seconds. But while the t rock R is undeniably rapid, it's the Puma that we find ourselves being drawn towards. It's good looking, practical, good value, and most importantly, a crossover that petrol heads can really enjoy. It's fair to say that we've not exactly been big fans of BMW's new design language here at Auto Mundial. With cars like the new 7 Series, X5 and X7 displaying some truly enormous front grills. By far the worst culprit though was surely the new 4 Series. With its enormous buck teeth, we feel that in time, maybe we'll get used to it. However, BMW isn't done yet. This is the new iX and it makes the new 4 Series' styling seem positively mundane. And while it continues the theme of having a face only a mother could love, that design philosophy seems to have been applied to all sides of the car. The car's flanks are blocky, making the wheels seem too small, although we do quite like the straight cut wheel arches. But it's 2021, and we've unfortunately come to expect controversial designs from BMW by now. So let's not focus on the subjective matter of styling and instead look at what this car is. Built to take on the likes of the Audi e-tron and Mercedes EQC, the iX is an all-electric SUV inspired by 2018's iNext concept. It's based on BMW's new scalable EV architecture, which will in time be put to use on all manner of new electric cars from the brand. A 100 kilowatt hour battery sits under the floor, sending power to two electric motors, one for each axle. Total power is said to be in excess of 500 brake horsepower, giving the X5 sized SUV a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of under 5 seconds. What's likely to be more of a concern to iX buyers, though, is the impressive 376 mile range. The battery can be charged at a rate of 200 kilowatt hours, meaning you'll be able to reach an 80% charge in under 40 minutes. To go with the iX's futuristic looks, it's packed full of some pretty futuristic technology. BMW says it has 20 times more computing power than anything else they've built, capable of processing all of the necessary data for autonomous driving. The cabin is pretty space age too, and a real step forward for BMW interiors. It's clean and simple, with everything from the speakers to the air vents having been blended into their surroundings. There's an interestingly shaped steering wheel, a big pair of bright screens, and all the switches are almost hidden in what BMW calls shy tech. It really is beautiful, with switches disguised within a little wooden control panel in the center console next to the elegant crystal-like iDrive controller. But it's a flashy interior, enough to make up for that divisive exterior styling. Well, if you really can't get over the looks, there are options out there. This is the Mercedes EQC, and we think it's one of the best looking SUVs of any sort on the market right now. Unlike the Tesla Model X or Jaguar I-Pace, the EQC doesn't shout about its electric credentials, instead looking like pretty much any other big Merc 4x4. 
It's a similar story inside too, where anyone who's ever travelled in a modern Mercedes will feel immediately at home. There are no TV-sized touchscreens or gullwing doors to swoon over. Instead, it's all very normal. In fact, the only real differences from a regular Mercedes interior are some different air vents, some tasteful copper accents and a sweeping panel running from the doors to the back of the dashboard. Powering the EQC is an 85 kilowatt battery hooked up to two electric motors producing 402 brake horsepower. That power is sent to all four wheels, resulting in a 0-62 time of just 5.1 seconds. Not bad for a 2.5-tonne SUV, although top speed is capped at 112 miles per hour. However, the Merc doesn't get as much cutting-edge tech as the BMW. Its range isn't as good either, at a WLTP confirmed 241 miles. So, how about this? Audi's first production EV, the e-tron. Available either as a regular SUV or a coupe version called the Sportback, the e-tron, like the Mercedes, isn't obviously an electric car. It still has a normal looking front grille and lots of standard Audi design cues. One giveaway that this is something a little futuristic is the pair of cameras out on stalks in place of door mirrors, projecting what's behind you onto screens inside the cabin and improving range thanks to the improved aero. Speaking of range, the Audi can get up to 273 miles from a single charge. Better than the Merc, but still a way off BMW's claims for the new iX. The regular e-tron hits 62 miles per hour from rest in 5.7 seconds, shrinking to 4.5 seconds in the top spec e-tron S, reaching a top speed of 130. Inside, the Audi looks and feels superb. There are numerous screens and lots of high-end trim. But this is a car that's been out for a couple of years now, and it just can't quite match the futuristic cabin of the iX. The BMW then, if you can look past the questionable design, looks like it could be a new class leader. But we'll have to wait for it to hit showrooms at the end of the year to really find out. After the break, the all-new Maybach and a wild new hot hatch from Toyota. Coming up, the Toyota GR Yaris, but first... When it comes to pure opulence and class, British brands Bentley and Rolls-Royce have always been tough to beat. Their current models hark back to bygone eras with tall chrome grills and bonnet mascots, ostentatious and demure in equal measure. For nearly two decades now though, those looking for a somewhat more discreet top-end limousine have gone for a Mercedes Maybach and now there is a new one. Based on the new Mercedes S-Class, a car that was already pretty well appointed, the new Maybach turns everything up to 11. The cabin is brimming with exquisite woods and leather, and the rear appears to have more space than most living rooms thanks to the extended wheelbase. Mercedes expects that most customers will prefer to travel in the back, letting their chauffeur do the hard work, and as such, the rear of the car gets just as much tech as the front. There's a pair of 11.6-inch touchscreens which let you browse the internet and watch TV, allowing you to really relax as you sink into the two reclining chairs that replace the regular S-Class's bench as you enjoy the various massage functions. But it's not just in the back where this dolled-up S-Class has been upgraded. The front gets all the same impressive tech as the regular car, but is all surrounded by even posher trim. On the outside, we'll let you make up your own minds about the paint scheme on this car, but it gets a familiar Maybach refresh with an imposing chrome grille, beautiful alloy wheels, and the distinctive Maybach logo on each of the rear pillars. The headlights, bumpers, and exhaust pipes have also been tweaked to mark this out as something a bit special to those in the know. 
Like the regular S-Class, the Maybach is capable of Level 3 autonomous driving using Mercedes Drive Pilot system. This allows the car to take over the throttle, braking and steering on designated stretches of motorway. However, this doesn't mean your chauffeur can totally sit back and relax. The car constantly monitors the driver with onboard cameras, automatically pulling the car over if they're unresponsive or not paying enough attention to the road. Other tech includes a wonderfully advanced active noise compensation system, which works with the Burmeister sound system, picking up low frequency background noise and producing a counterphase sound wave through the speakers. Under the bonnet will be the choice of either a V8 or a V12, both with hybrid assistance and both providing ample performance. So has Maybeck finally beaten the Brits? Well, it's certainly close. This is the all-new Rolls-Royce Ghost, and while it may be the baby of the Rolls range, it's every bit as luxurious as any other model in the lineup. At first glance, you may think that this is just a mild facelift of the old model, but look closer and you begin to notice the changes. This is a brand new car from the ground up, and it isn't as similar as you might think. For a start, it's longer and wider than the old model, although the clever styling draws the eye into the tapered front and rear ends, so it isn't obvious. Panel joints have been eliminated wherever possible, and then there's the illuminated front grille. It's still big and shiny, but the spirit of ecstasy now sits on the bonnet, a first for Rolls-Royce. The cabin looks a bit more traditional than the Maybex, but it's packed full of the latest tech, but everything has been designed to be easy to operate. Everything you can imagine has been automated, even the doors. The six and three quarter litre twin turbo engine is a modified version of the V12 found in the Cullinan. It's bigger than the motor found in the old car and while power remains unchanged at 563 brake horsepower, peak torque has been increased by 10%. While both the Maybach and the Ghost offer similar levels of cosseting luxury, they both seem to go about it in slightly different ways. The Rolls-Royce is a bit more glamorous, while the Maybach to most just looks like a big Merc with extra chrome. Both are exquisite and both are worthy of their enormous price tag. Every now and then, a new car arrives with so much hype attached to it that it seems impossible for it to live up to expectations. One such car is this, the all-new Toyota GI Yaris, and for good reason. It's caused the pulses of petrol heads all over the world to race with its all-wheel drive, limited slip differentials and real rally pedigree. This is what's known as a homologation car. Basically, a vehicle produced so Toyota could take it rallying in the WRC. Sadly though, following the COVID-19 pandemic, the rules were changed and the rally car project was scrapped. Thankfully, however, this road version wasn't. Following on from the old Imprezas, Evos and Celicas, it's the first true rally car for the road in a generation. And as such, expectations are high. And immediately, you can tell this little ankle biter means business. With a whole new body, it's completely different from the regular Yaris, with a squat, purposeful stance and lots of sporty details, like the forged alloy wheels, the twin exhausts, and plenty of GR badges dotted around. GR, or Gazoo Racing, is Toyota's performance division responsible for its racing and rally cars, as well as this Yaris and the new Supra. Powering this pint-sized three-door grunt nugget is a turbocharged 1.6-litre three-cylinder motor. That might not sound like much, but it puts out a healthy 257 bhp and powers the Aris from 0 to 62 miles per hour in just five and a half seconds. That big lump of power is sent through a six-speed manual gearbox to an adaptive all-wheel drive system and, if you spec the circuit pack, two limited slip diffs. Torque is automatically split between the two axles, each one capable of receiving all of the power if required. There are three driving modes, Normal, which sends 60% of the engine's power to the front wheels, Sport, which sends 70% to the rear, and Track, which locks in a 50-50 split between the axles. Inside, the cabin is a little less exotic and a lot more regular Toyota. It feels nice and solid, with a great three-spoke steering wheel and a chunky gear stick. Amusingly, the speedo goes all the way up to 180 miles an hour. 
A bit optimistic perhaps, but this is likely to be a new favourite in the tuning scene. So, it's a real throwback to some of the most exciting Japanese cars of the 90s. It isn't even too expensive, with prices starting at just under £30,000 for the standard car, rising to £33,500 for the circuit pack version. However, at that price point, the little Yaris is going up against one of the best in the hot hatch business, the Honda Civic Type R. Unlike the Toyota, the Civic follows a more traditional front-wheel drive layout, but don't for a second think that this is anything less than a true driver's car. With its most recent update, the Type R is better than ever, with incredible levels of grip and straight-line speed. We're not too sure about the styling, but you soon forget about it when you go for a drive. The Civic is an incredible car, although it will struggle to keep up with the Toyota, hitting 62 from rest 0.3 seconds later. And while it does have as much grip as we've ever found in a front-driven hot hatch, nothing beats an all-wheel drive system for utter confidence. The GR Yaris is everything we hoped it would be, and a car that truly lives up to the hype. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out the new Land Rover Discovery.